Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Game Talks. My name is Keith. I'm Will. And he's Will. Why are we here today, Will? Why have you called me to this dark, grimy room? Why have I called <laughs> you, Keith? <laughs> you what? I've called you. You've called me here. Yeah. Do you, Dungeon Boys reference. Yes, Dungeon Shout Boys out. reference. Shout um, out to so Dungeon Keith, Boys. I brought you here today because I think that when you purchase a Switch, or when you get one for your birthday, whatever happens, Santa Claus brings it to you, okay. whatever happens, uh, I want Splatoon 2 to be one of your first games. Well, that's going to be a hard sell. It's going to be a hard sell? That's going to be a hard sell because I played it for like two minutes on your Switch a couple of weeks ago. Um, so I'll say I didn't enjoy myself. I found I found the learning curve to be too steep. Keep you played for two minutes, man. Something as cute as this needs to... I need to start it up and be good at it, right? I disagree. No. So you're here to prove the, me wrong. I'm here to prove you wrong, Keith. But here's the thing, though. I will allow... Whenever you get your Switch, I will allow you to purchase the usual, the usual suspects first. I will Very allow well. you to purchase... Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, you can purchase that before it. You can purchase Super Mario Odyssey before it. You can purchase Super Smash Bros. Ultimate before it. You can purchase Let's Go Pikachu or Eevee, whichever one you want first. Okay. But after those usual suspects have been taken care of, I think this should be your next game. Well, I'm glad you're allowing me to do that, because otherwise your feelings might get hurt. Because <laughs> I knew that wasn't going to happen. I knew there's no way you're going to get a Switch and not play Smash Bros. first. Right. Or not play Zelda first. That's true. I'm a fair man, you know? Yeah, but I just think fair. that you need to give this game a second look-see. And maybe at some point I'll let you play a little more extended, you know, okay. more than that two minutes. Sure. Because there is there is a learning curve, especially with the motion controls. That is that was my main gripe. But Keith, here's the thing: the motion controls. I didn't even write this down as a point, but the motion controls in it are basically like a step between, like you know how people are like, there's either console stick controls for FPSs or there's mouse and keyboard, and mouse and keyboard yep. is better. This okay. is like halfway between. All right. Because it's like I'll be aiming with this. You can see right there. Yeah. And then slight adjustments with this. Oh, okay. So okay. it's like I mainly get over to them, and then if I'm off just a little bit, slight tilt. All right. And once you're shooting, like, it, it just works. Once you get it down, okay. it works. So, but... I don't want to derail your arguments. I'm sure they're very well organized. I think Game Talks has a... I think we have a reputation for... I, if you have an argument, I derail that, and, <laughs> and I, I, pick, I pick, pick it apart piecemeal. I want you to have your full spiel and give it to me. I will sit quietly, I will listen, and I will take my lashes. Okay. All right. Well, Keith, um, this is a new point that I recently discovered, because you only see this the first time you ever start the game up, but I bought a friend of the show, Jessica Lyons, I bought her Splatoon <laughs> 2. <laughs> friend of the show. For, um, for her birthday. And she came over and put her, slid her switch into my dock, and I watched her start it up. And when I, I forgot about this. Whenever you start it up, it says, very minimalist uh, title screen, it says, Nintendo presents mm. and it's like dang they're proud of this aren't they and it's a Splatoon 2 and then you go into a little tutorial thing you like kind of learn the motion do the do all that stuff so yeah just that uh, it puts you in this world really well whenever you start it up you're in this thing right here called Inkopolis Square okay uh, up there in that little plaza that's where you go to <laughs> there yeah. the little lobby that's where you go fight matches okay uh, over here you can buy clothes and I'm gonna go into that right now. Fashion that I do focus. enjoy. I would like to drop back and and clarify that your first point is it says Nintendo presents when you open the game. Yes. I just want to clarify that yes. for the audience at home. Very well. Hopefully we're building. We're building. <laughs> yes. We're, <laughs> we're we're rolling down the hill. Yeah. Um, okay. So you can buy clothes. This is my current outfit, and I've decked it out um, via. So every time you level up, these things will be randomized at first. So once you get a certain amount of points, it'll give you a random uh, ability, kind of like perks in Call of Duty. Okay. And then you can scrub them off, and then they turn into ability chunks that you can then apply at your own discretion later on. Mm -hmm. So it's not all randomized. So like right here, I've completely, this is like my outfit. Yeah. Dang it. But <laughs> I've got like five swim speeds on there. I've got three ink recoveries, and I've got three ink resistances. So there's just a lot of customization in that. Also, you can like try and just make your outfit match. Okay, like so was, this carry over to multiplayer play. Mm -hmm, this you, is multiplayer. You, different, you differentiate your, your character's abilities for multiplayer. Okay, all yep. right, that's mm -hmm. cool. And you'll be looking unique. You know, it's all, the Inkling, their uh, culture is all about fashion. They're right. very, very fashion focused. And uh, so that's a, that's a fun thing. I have a question. Yes. Tell me, now I'm looking at Will's character. He has earmuffs on. Mm -hmm. He Tell listens me to why. podcasts. Okay, these are, these are headphones. Yes. Not earmuffs. Yes. Okay. Those I'm pretty sure those, let's see what they're called. Yeah, they look Octophones. Like, they're octophones. Okay. Yeah, my headcanon is that he listens to podcasts while he's, while he's <laughs> going <laughs> around inking stuff. Um, well, so, well, well, well. and then the fact, <laughs> the fact that they're so focused on fashion makes this next point stand out to me. There's a mode called Salmon Run, which is Splatoon 2's take on Nazi zombies horde mode from Gears of War. Okay. But it's better in that 
An ideal run, an ideal game of Salmon Run only lasts you five minutes. There are three waves that you have to get through. If you get through all three waves, you're done. The goal is not, an ideal run of Nazi Zombies is you're playing for eight hours and you make it to wave 120. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is already like a bite-sized version of that. And while you do that, you get bonuses that you can use in the main multiplayer modes. That's how you get like experience boost double, uh, battle currency double, so you get more bonuses from your actual competitive matches. And then one thing that, uh, like going on the fashion focus thing, whenever you're working for Grizzco, it's contextualized as you're working this grimy, under the table job for this company called Grizzco. And while you're doing that mode, it's like a co-op, like court style thing. Sure. And while you're doing it, you can't wear your outfit. You have to wear a uniform. Mm, so whenever cool. you're at work, you can't be all fashion focused. You gotta wear your uniform. So it just really gets you into like this world of it. And then I'm gonna go into um, talking about context. So it's always bothered me in multiplayer shooters, like Call of Duty, there's six players on a match. Why are the, what is this battle? Why are six people versus six people yeah. on this one map from the single player campaign? Why is it when one soldier dies, another one immediately comes back to make it always be six versus six? Sure. What is the context beyond this? Reasonable. So Call of Duty's like that. For the folks at home, Will is explaining me this, explaining this to me in Call of Duty terms, not because I'm a Call of Duty fan, but because it is how I would understand it. It's still one of the. I played Battlefield, played Call of Duty. Those are multiplayer shooters I've played. Other than that, not a big multiplayer shooter guy. So I don't want you guys to think, especially if you have any like Battlefield elitists out there, or just <laughs> I hate Call of Duty and this I hate war games or whatever. I don't want you to think, oh, Keith is some some Call of Duty mark. Yeah. Not not true. Not this guy. Not, not true. This guy. Also, I'd like to apologize if you hear a loud hum. That is the air conditioner in this room. It's currently 83 degrees, and I don't want it to get any hotter. So you'll have to deal with that. Yep. Please back to it. <laughs> okay. So, context in Call of Duty makes no sense. We've established that. You're correct. A game that does context a little bit better is Overwatch. You know I'm a big fan of Overwatch. Um, the way Overwatch does it, there's a, they're all about their lore and their context. Um, they've got all these little short films on the characters and whatever, like giving their backstories and everything. But even then, even a game that is so focused on lore and context, it still makes absolutely no sense to me why there is a battle going on with six members of Overwatch fighting six other members of Overwatch. Mm -hmm. Why are they not, why is it not separated Overwatch and Blackwatch? Like why can Overwatch characters be on the same team as Reaper, stuff like that? It still makes no sense. So even a game that prides itself that much still falls apart on a contextual level. Misplaced Splatoon pride, 2, Splatoon 2, we're all just playing games, Keith. That's it. We're not in a battle. We're not doing anything. We're not fighting for blood or anything. You get splatted, you respawn. I still don't understand the technology behind how respawning works. That, that's not gonna satisfy you in that regard if you're all hung up on how respawns work. But basically, no one's trying to kill anyone. We're all just having fun. This is like inkling football, basically. Sure. This is their soccer. This is what they do. They do turf wars. There's rank modes also that are a little bit more like focused. Like, like Rainmaker is kind of like football. Like you have this big weapon that you have to take into their base, like capture the flag style. Okay. But yeah, all the modes are just you're having fun. Whereas even like I said, even in a game like Overwatch, where it prides itself on contextualization, falls apart on that level. So this game, you're never not in the world. You're never thinking what is going on. Why is this happening? It all makes sense. Inklins hanging out, having fun, buying clothes, looking looking fresh. That's what they say. Looking fresh. Whenever you get the the highest uh, pay tier for Salmon Run, uh, you're called a professional. Ah, so yeah, that's Just, cute. This game's adorable. It's, it's adorable. cute. It is cute. It's cute um, to look at. I have also written down amazing fluid gameplay. You would have to. Um, you know, get into the motion controls first. Mm -hmm. But just, I don't know how they came up with this, the idea of you heal yourself and you refill your ammo by swimming in ink that you get from shooting your gun and the ink lands on the ground and then you can swim through it. Mm -hmm. And then also this, uh, the way that the inking of the map works, it's a really cool way of like making, letting you visualize like who's got control of what part of the map. Yeah. Like if you pull up the map, you see that this part's mostly green, this part's pink, you're like, okay, the, the bad guys are over here. It can communicate via paint being in which area, communicates what's going on in the game. Sure. So, once again, context. And then the last thing I have written down, Keith, is that this is a single player multiplayer experience. Okay. And that when and the only mode that you can team up with your friends on is called Late League Battle, which is like the super competitive ranked modes, but it's a league battle variant where you can team up with your people. Other than that, anyone that you're playing with online, they're by themselves too. So there's no risk of you know, you and three noobs on your team versus a team of four that are using headsets and talking. So okay. everyone's kind of on the same playing field in that regard. And then another way that it can, you can still have the, you can kind of have your cake and eat it too, where I don't like playing, I like playing multiplayer games, but I don't like talking to people while I play multiplayer games. Sure. So with this game, what you can do is in a regular game mode, just via the D-pad, just sliding your finger down here. If I press up, it'll say this way. So my guy will go, 
they'll like do his little hand like this and they'll yeah. say this way. So I'll tell my teammates, teammates behind me, he'll be like, oh, Wiltang wants to move over here. Let's go sure. make this push over here. Uh, if we do something really cool, like we're winning, time's running out, we're about to win, I can hit down and my guy goes, booyah. So there's a lot of camaraderie where if your team does something cool, one person hits down, everyone else starts hitting down, and sure. you all just start booyahing together. Booyahing together. And then you can do this too. We call this a squid party, Keith. It's a squid party. Where you press the swim button over and over again. We do something cool, we're going to dance to a squid party. Okay. Yeah. We're going to have a seizure again. <laughs> so we're having seizures and saying booyah. Yeah. So single player, multiplayer experience, you can play it by yourself, but you're still, you still have the feeling of camaraderie through being able to say, it's so satisfying whenever I hit someone with a this way and they actually follow me, oh, yeah. and then we do something cool, and it's like they listen to me, I communicate it without saying anything, yeah. and we just got it. So, hit me, Keith. Rebuttal time. Question, Rebuttal time. I'm gonna start and go, I guess I'm gonna head backwards. Okay. First of all, no, I'm not gonna head backwards, I'm gonna start at the beginning, not a point. Okay. That it says Nintendo, pre Nintendo presents, that's not a point. I'm, I'm taking away a point. I was being cute, Keith. Oh, okay. Excuse me. <laughs> Can I have that point back? When you told when you told me I'm coming, you said I, I believe in our quote, Keith. I'm coming with the heavy hitters. I'm gonna I'm gonna Nintendo presents. I'm gonna remove your socks with this presentation. These are not quotes, but I have to remove Nintendo presents from the points. Okay. I can't I can't allow it. All right. We'll Cute just or not, scratch that out. I can't allow it. Please scratch that away. Okay. It's scratched. Viewers, you heard it. You did not hear it. <laughs> Nintendo what? Okay. No. All right. Now that one's out of the way, Keith. Okay. Now I want to start backwards. Will, what if I want to play with my friends? What if I'm someone, I will say most, most of my time with multiplayer shooters have been with at least one person that I know and care for. I spent a lot of time in Battlefield with my friend Matt. We played a lot of Battlefield together. He was better at it than me, but we played together. We were on the same squad. I had somebody to spawn on, a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, what else did I play? Destiny, which is a co-op game, played a lot of that with Xenus. Big, big fan of playing that together. I would, I would put almost zero hours into that game had I not had a friend. So what if, what if I'm someone, me personally, if I'm jumping in, maybe I want to play with you, especially because I'm only playing because I've had a friend that argued so strongly that I should play. Why? Yeah. I, what if I want to play with you? We could party up and play Salmon Run together, okay. which is the co-op one. You can get into a group for that. Um, we could do league battles together, but that would be like the pretty we'd hot. Stopped. Yeah, we might get stomped. Uh, well, we would be starting out in C minus rank, so okay. we'd be with a bunch of other noobs. Maybe okay. we could work our way up. So there is, you know, we could league battle together. We also, you could join me while you can't party up to go into a turf war. Turf war is like the main cover the map in your color. Yeah, Whoever right. has the most territory covered wins. You could join me, but there's a 50 50 chance that you will be on the other team. Very well. So we're swapping between being on the same team and being on other teams. And okay. I do that with Kevin a lot, and it is surprisingly really fun. No, that to go does from, sound fun. Yeah, to go from working together to wrecking each other. Now, so, tell me this. Yes, sir. Is that the is the the directional pad the only way I can communicate with you? Because what if I am the kind of person who I would like to go on when I'm playing, and whenever I do something good against you on your team, I would like to say something like. I slept with your mother. Yes. Or you suck and you should never have been born. <laughs> or if I want to say that to someone on my own team, mm -hmm. if I say want to say something rude about their mother, if I want to tell them that they should yeah. hurt themselves or something. Now, if that's the kind of player I am, is and I think that's more of a switch gripe. Am I right? Yeah, it's I was about a, to say that's an issue with the switch. Yeah. Okay. There unfair, is unfair. <laughs> unfair. There is voice chat, but you have to use a smartphone app. Oh. And it can't run in the background, so you have to have the app running oh, at all times. So honestly, like when me and Kevin do it, we just fire up Skype sure. and just talk to each other on Skype. It's an easy workaround, Reasonable. but there is no built-in way. Is that it. coming? Separate point. Is that coming? It might be with the online uh, thing, but part of me kind of doubts it. Okay. Um, interestingly enough, Fortnite on Switch does have voice chat. You can just plug in a pair of headphones and talk to people. So I don't know how Fortnite can work around that. Fortnite but, is all. Fortnite knows all. Fortnite does all. Yeah. With Fortnite, everything is permitted. Nothing is forbidden. True. You get, there's a mode called playground mode now, Keith, where you just run around the map and don't do anything. I, I don't build, get it. I just want to build something with my friends. Let's push my Fortnite. shopping cart around, Keith. You want to get in the shopping cart? Uh, yep, push yep, around? Yep. Now we're just hating on Fortnite. Sorry, That's guys. Just, well, it is kind of dumb. It's a, kind of a silly game. The only thing that makes a shopping cart fun for me is like, oh, I'm doing this while there's 100 people shooting at me or whatever, like while yeah. I'm trying not to be dead. Yeah. But if I... Fortnite's okay. We're, we're not here to trash Fortnite. Yeah, let's that's, get That's a different Fortnite. video. Um, you got any more, uh, you going to take me down any more pegs, Keith? What if I want to say, which this actually is, it just doesn't, 
which I don't know if this is something you can fix, but it just doesn't pull me in. The idea of the paint, yeah. uh, just the, the aesthetic of it, it just doesn't pull me in and say, Keith, I know that you are not typically into this aesthetic, but you should be. The game doesn't do that. It's so like 90s Nickelodeon though, Keith, I feel like you should love it. I do love I feel, 90s Nickelodeon. I don't know what I can do for you in that regard. But I will yeah. tell you that whenever Splatoon 1 came out, I wasn't going to buy it day one, but then my roommate's little brother was like super excited about it. He played the, the free, they did like a weekend long demo yeah. where you could play it. He was really excited about it and I bought it and I fell in love. Okay. So maybe it's one of those things where you just got to put more time into it, but awesome. I also don't want you to have to spend $60 to put time into this game and then maybe not like it. Sure. So we might not meet a consensus on this, uh, on this episode, but yeah. I'm not going to say that I am not convinced. It is a, You have certainly convinced me to want to try it some more. Um, the, Maybe the, the couple minutes that I played, I found it difficult, mm -hmm. which at the type of person I am, I don't typically jump into something and then immediately find it, like think, oh, I don't know what to do, and I, I feel yeah. like an old man when I was yeah. playing it. Um, yeah. So that was a little bit of a barrier. But I don't, I don't think your mission is unaccomplished, but I don't think that that has definitely hit like the fifth slot on my Switch purchase list. I have one more point that I just thought Very well, hit, it, hit me with it. There is a single player mode in this. Ah. And it's kind of... You might be getting me now. Have you ever played Super Mario Galaxy? Uh, I've probably seen pieces of it. So like running around this tiny little area and then you blast off to another planet and land on that. Yeah. It's kind of like that, the single player. You'll be in like this little area, you have to kill a few enemies, you got to swim up a thing. And then you'll get on a launch pad and it'll launch you to another section. Okay. So it's very kind of like Super Mario Galaxy with a gun. But then there's a DLC, a paid DLC. Um, mostly there's free DLC on this game. Like yep. every few weeks they'll add new weapons, add new maps, and it's all free. But there was the first ever paid DLC in Splatoon franchise history. It's called the Octo Expansion. Mm -hmm. And it is a super focused version of the single player. Where in the main single player all the levels are kind of the same. Like same setup, same, same goal, everything. Auto expansion goes crazy, goes a little nuts. There's a game. There's one level where it's a big arena, kind of like a hockey stadium, sort of, and you're running around on the edge, like where the spectators would sit. Yeah. You've got a sniper rifle, and you're playing pool. There's a big eight ball, mm -hmm. and you've got to like shoot it with the sniper rifle and have it bounce off and go into the holes. That's really so cool. it just does really wacky stuff like that. It's actually really challenging too. So honestly, right. playing through the auto expansion. I th already thought I was pretty good at Splatoon. Once I beat the auto expansion, went into multiplayer, started using the ink brush. It just clicked for me, and I was really good. Okay. So, yeah. That is that is probably enough to do it for me. I'll be honest with you. The sync. If I can do stuff like that by myself. Yeah, you can I'll learn it with no stress of like getting wrecked. Sure. Basically. I will give this experience from my life. I never thought that I would fall in love with Rocket League. I saw Rocket League. It was free. I was like, I'm gonna download this on PSN. It's free. Put the PlayStation Plus or whatever. I'll probably play it 10 minutes and I'll think, oh, I don't really care for this. Mm -hmm. Sports games nor racing games are really yeah. my thing. Yeah. I probably have put more hours into Rocket League than probably any other game on my Dang, PlayStation son. to be on. Like in college, it was jump online, play Rocket League with Matt, play Rocket League with Zenus. Yeah. Into the wee hours of the morning, many nights of the week. There's something about Rocket League. There's something about there's something about the community. There's something about like getting frustrated with other people because it's the same thing. It's that the communication with the D-pad, yeah. where it's like you can you say good shot, but you can say good shot like yeah good shot. Or, or like, if you yeah. suck and you yeah. do something bad and you get a good <laughs> shot from a different team like a, a, the other team, like you know it's like good shot yeah. or whatever, and you yeah. can just read the profanity in between the lines. Mm -hmm. But I never thought I would love that game. But Rocket League is a beautiful game and I love it. This might be a Rocket League situation. Did I put Rocket League on my top ten games? No. It was there. It was on a. It was on a rough draft. It was on a rough draft, really. It was on a rough draft. Thanks, man. Splatoon um, Two was on a rough draft of mine too. Perfect. So. Well, yeah. I think you might have convinced me. I'll probably get it. Really? I mean, heck yeah. what's sixty dollars for somebody with a studio and a YouTube yeah, channel? Right. I just want to say, Keith, it feels great to be in here. Uh, this is what hard work looks like. <laughs> it's finally paid off. Um, yeah. Feels great. Have our own studio. Got to get some internet up in here. We got a yeah. TV here now. We do. So uh, when Smash Bros. Ultimate comes out, we're going to be having some parties here. Hopefully so. Yep. Um, but in the meantime, do you have anything else? Nope, that's it right now. Well, thank you so much for watching. Maybe I got you'll... him, you guys. I got him. Maybe you'll see me on the Splatoon 2 leaderboards. Because <laughs> if I get it, I won't stop till I'm number one. Yes, sir. Numero uno. Um, but please come back for our next game talk. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Tell us what you think. Tell us what you think about Splatoon 2. Yeah. Give Will his what fur or agree with him. Yeah. 
Everyone, I just want someone in the comments to agree with me that it is a top five Switch game. Kevin McAbee probably will. Kevin yeah. McAbee, our man Kevin. Shout out. Appreciate you, Kevin. Yes, sir. Sorry about the echo in here, friend. <laughs> We're working <laughs> on it. And don't forget to smash that like button. I don't want to be that guy. Can I take it back? No. No, no edits. <laughs> okay. No cuts. All right. We'll see you next time. We love you very much. Yes, we love you very much.